deafness is the most common sensory deficit in the world. It affects not just a person's ability to communicate, but also their quality of life. I was diagnosed with a moderate to severe hearing loss when I was about five years old. Over time, my hearing may decrease, so I don't know if I'm going to retain my hearing that I have right now. But at some point, I might go deaf, so we'll see. The current standard of care for hearing loss is a hearing aid or a cochlear implant. The Bertarelli program in translational neuroscience and neuroengineering is interested in developing biological treatments for hearing loss, specifically gene therapy. Our goal is to restore hearing in patients who suffer from genetic deafness. The Bertarelli program has brought together scientists at EPFL, Harvard Medical School, and our lab here at Boston Children's Hospital. And together, we're working on developing viral vectors to deliver DNA into the inner ear of patients with genetic hearing loss. So we've started this collaboration. We're working on the viral vectors, you know, developing the viruses to carry those genes. Jeffrey was working on the hair loss that leads to, to, to deafness, and by putting them together, it became obvious that something quite unique could be done. By complementing our two expertise, we try to develop vectors that would be applicable first to mouse model of deafness and later to patients. The first gene we tackled was called TMC1. TMC1 forms a protein that is crucial for converting sound into electrical signals. When there are genetic mutations that affect TMC1, it causes deafness. So our approach was to restore the correct DNA sequence for TMC1 and see if we could restore function. And the approach is to take a viral vector, engineer it, remove the viral genes, and then replace it with genes we're interested in. So we can put the DNA of a correct sequence into the virus, and the virus can carry that sequence into the cells of the inner ear and restore hearing. So we can see here the healthy sequence of the gene, and here we see the sequence of the non-healthy gene. Here, what we show is that we are, we are able to disrupt the mutated allele, so the mutated gene, without touching the wild-type allele, also the healthy gene. He has a wonderful animal model called the Beethoven mouse that is deaf because it has a mutation in the gene called TMC1. If we are able to give them an injection when they're born, basically providing this correct building block, this correct gene, then they will grow up hearing. When we got our first results, it was remarkable. He was able to show that those mice started to hear. During the first round of funding, we developed proof of principle data to support this approach. During the second round, we're expanding on that, trying to tackle different genes, different forms of genetic hearing loss, and improvement on the viral vectors that we use to deliver those genes. Now, I would say gene therapy is the most advanced for the sensory organs, so we have seen some some progress made for the restoration of vision, and we hope now to see some progress made for the restoration of hearing. And I think in a not too distant future, we will be able to test this in humans, and the likelihood that it will have an effect, I think, is very high. So for me, this is very exciting. I, I would have never done this if uh, you know, we didn't have this opportunity through the uh, Bursary Foundation program. I've been working in the field for 25 years and to see this work come so far and be at the point where we may now be able to treat patients with genetic hearing loss is amazing. Being able to hear naturally is what we all deserve. Whether it's 
hearing music or hearing your friends or just in the middle of the night waking up and hearing your dog. So I think gene therapy would be wonderful. I would love to be able to have my full hearing back and be able to like just go about my everyday life as a normal hearing person can.